What is going on everybody? It is Tree from Tree Talks here and today what we're going to talk about is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Denver Broncos week number four preview ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited because this is going to be on TV so I don't even need to leave the comfort of my own home to watch this game. Now before we get into this video make sure you drop a like down below if you are excited for the week number four contest between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Denver Broncos. There's quite a bit of stuff to talk about. There's quite a bit of stuff to discuss. So let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into the video. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Denver Broncos week number four preview. So the main topic of discussion for Jaguar fans, at least on Twitter from what I am seeing and on Facebook as well, is everybody wants to talk about this six game stretch that the Jags have. They say that these are all winnable games and the Jags should be able to get it done with Gardner Minshew at the helm. And I'm very excited for this six game stretch. We got a Saint, a Drew Breesless Saints. We have the Jets, I believe. And I can't remember all the Bengals. I know are one of them, and you know it looks it looks good for us. It looks like we have an opportunity to actually go out there and do some good stuff on that football field, and I'm very excited for it. I think that the Jaguars have a really good opportunity to win this game. The Broncos did not look very impressive last week, and they have not really looked impressive all season. The only thing that really bothers me is their run game with Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman. That is a good running back duo that they have in Denver. If the Jags have proved that they are weak at any position on that defense, it is the run defense. They have struggled mightily all year. Um, I don't think any rusher really has a... You know, Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde is a perfect example for the Texans, dude. He dominated us. LaShawn McCoy in the flats dominated us. Derrick Henry, it's a given. He's always going to have good games against us. I think that the run defense did step up a little bit last week against the Titans, but that's because Tennessee was a little bit one-dimensional. Now, if we can make uh, Denver one-dimensional in this game and make them really run the football and really commit to it, and we know that's what they're going to do and that's what they're going to run, in that case, then I think we are going to have a really good opportunity to win this football game. But if they are able to kind of run their offense, run what they're looking to do, and commit to what they're trying to commit to, and they're going to throw in the pass, and Flacco, you know, has an opportunity to throw some passes, I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle. You know, I hope Gardner Minshew continues to play well. We'll talk about the offense in a little bit, but this defense as a whole really needs to step up as a run defensive unit. And if we're able to shut that down, I think we'll have no problem shutting the pass down. I'm really not worried about this Denver offense. There are some people on the Denver defense that worry me a little bit, but I think defensively we match up really well against the Broncos offense. So the one thing that's going to have to step up and to continue to be a factor is our offensive side of the ball. Gardner Minshew has proven to be a quarterback that we can rely on. It's insane saying that, and you know you almost feel like you're jinxing it as a Jags fan by saying that because we've had to go through such terrible quarterback play over the years that it's insane to even you know step into a game to say that you have confidence in your quarterback but every time Gardner Minshew drops back to throw I have confidence that that pass is going to be completed so I am very very excited to watch Gardner Minshew play but this defense that Denver has is no joke they are getting up there in age quite a bit you know in their secondary at least but up front on their defensive line their linebackers they are all around terrific players. I mean, you obviously got Von Miller, you got, you know, a young stud and Bradley Chubb, and this offensive line against this defensive line is going to be the matchup that is going to match on the offense. And you know how well they're going to open up running lanes because you know Von Miller is going to be all over the field. You know, Bradley Chubb is going to be making plays. We need to make sure that Leonard Fournette has alleys to run through and Leonard Fournette improves his, improves his, improves his vision to be able to make, you know, good decisions, make downhill runs, be able to run it right up the middle, get five, six yards, set up Gardner Minshew for second, third, and manageable. That's what guys like Gardner Minshew live for is second, third, and manageable. Like that's, if it's a third and four, I'm betting on Gardner Minshew to make the throw to get the first down 10 times out of 10. And that comes with Leonard Fournette being able to run the ball efficiently on first and second down. But that's not me saying that we should continue to do this predictable play calling nonsense and, you know, run it every single first down, every single second down, be able to run it right up the gut every Every time because it's just so predictable but I'm saying that if you are going to run the ball on first and second down then you need to run with a purpose you need to be able to get those three four five yards 
on first and second down to be able to set up for a third and manageable. I would also like to see guys like Raquel Armstead get involved because we do have other running backs. I know that may surprise you, but we do have other running backs, even though we like to use Leonard Fournette in literally 97% of the snaps. And that's such a great idea, too, from the perspective that he gets hurt like all the time. I know he hasn't got hurt yet. But, you know, he gets injured quite a bit. You know, that's been, like, his whole thing. You know, even in 2017, he'd have a couple of banged-up injuries. So, you know, let's just play him on 97% of the snaps. I want to see guys like Raquel Armstead get their, you know, long overdue runs and to see what they can contribute to this offense. You know, a backfield of Gardner Minshew and Raquel Armstead. You would have said that would be a great backfield for week number four of the preseason. But how about week number four of the regular season? This is so insane that this is jaguar football right now but we have an opportunity to be a 500 football team and you know kind of put ourselves into the race for the division you know uh houston and indianapolis keep winning i thought indianapolis was going to continue to be a pretty all right team i think jacoby Brissett's a lot better than what a lot of people give him credit for um you know he did struggle against the jags when he did have to play us but you know with that being said everyone struggled against the 2017 jaguars you know what i mean so Hopefully we can do some things, you know, to beat the Colts out and hopefully the Colts and the Texans can lose their game. So, you know, it'll do us some favors, boost us up in the division rankings. We definitely cannot take a loss in this situation. Let's keep burying the Titans. The Titans don't even matter. Let's just keep burying them and to irrelevancy so they just don't even matter and we'll be continuing to compete for the division but like I said this offensive line against their defensive line is going to be the most crucial matchup that the Jaguars are going to have to win this week against the Denver Broncos also you know our wide receivers are going to have to get open against this veteran secondary though they're getting a little old a little bit slow you know they're definitely experienced and they know what they're doing on that side of the field so guys like DJ Chark are going to have to continue to play games you know D.D. Westbrook is a guy that we really need to see improve after his three drop game against Tennessee Hopefully he comes out, he improves. Let's see Marquise Lee get involved with the offense. You know, that that miscue throw uh, on Thursday with Gardner Minshew and Marquise Lee was so freaking close to being a beautiful throw and catch. Let's see Marquise Lee get involved this week against Denver. I am very excited for this game. I think this is a game that the Jaguars should be able to come out on top and win. That's me, wishful thinking. Let's hope Gardner Minshew comes out and plays well. Let's hope this offensive line plays well as well. And let's see his defensive line continue to make strides against this Denver offensive line. Let's sack Joe Flacco like 10 freaking times, ladies and gentlemen. And that was my Jaguars versus Broncos week number four preview. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four or five days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them is just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.